check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. We got to talk about some highlights from the uh, from the Dynamite show. Let's start with the uh, let's start with the best thing on the show, which was Young Bucks versus Private Party tag team titles. Private Party must split up forever if they don't win. And my God, speaking of Ricky Morton, you know it's going to seem like an odd tie-in. But I must put myself over. My myself and Filthy Tom wrestled the Rock and Roll Express. You did. That's right. We wrestled the Rock and Roll Express. Ricky and Robert. And granted, we didn't win. No. But for 15 minutes of that Black Label Pro show, we turned back the clock. And I bring it up because. I watched this match, and listen, I was there at WrestleDream, okay? I was there in the crowd. I watched the Young Bucks versus Private Party at WrestleDream. And it was like, it was like a really good match. But when it was over, it was like, eh, it was a really good match. But was it like an all-timer, like an all-time great Young Bucks? Eh, it was, I mean, it was just like, it was really good. I think I gave it four stars or something. It was like good. It was like really good. But there was just something about it. That it kept it from that level. Maybe it was a crowd. I don't know what it was. But my God, this match last night. Oh, my God. I thought this was way better than the pay-per-view match. And granted, it's funny because, like, there were 6,500 people, 7,000, somewhere around that in the Tacoma Dome. But, you know, they were cheering and everything. But it wasn't like a barn burner. They had 3,200 people, I believe, at the show last night, which was a good crowd for a Dynamite. And these people were just going nuts during this match. And they just had incredible heat from about five minutes in. And they're doing all of these crazy spots. Everybody looks great. It's probably the best match private parties ever had in their lives. And they finally win the titles. And the place just freaking exploded. And it was like, for 20 minutes... It's like 2019 all over again. Like, this was 2019 AEW stuff right here. Just an incredible match. I mean, everybody looked great. Crowds going haywire. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And then the Bucks give the belts to a private party. And they leave. And then they pack their bags. And they leave the building. And Chris Daniels is trying to stop them, and they're like, no, nope, this place is pure chaos. We came back and wanted to try to make this place. Nobody wanted to listen to us. We're out of here. We're working from home. So, I don't know. They could be back in a week. But I watched this thing, and it was like, they're gone for a while. And it's kind of interesting because it's like there are two different universes in AEW. There's, like, this John Moxley universe where he's trying to take over the company and, like, all these baby faces are just getting murdered every week. And then there's, like, the other half of AEW where, like, none of this even exists. Like, Swerve's there, but he's dealing with the Hurt Business and this and that. And the Young Bucks are kind of right in the middle. They don't want to be involved, but, like, they're, they're at least acknowledging that this is going on. And I watched it, and I thought, okay, well, they're going to go home for a while, and then the day's going to come where they return to try to save AEW as baby faces. But the problem is, there's another universe where they've got an issue with Kenny Omega, who's going to be coming back soon. And he ain't coming back as a heel. So I'm not sure what's going to happen in terms of, of what the Young Bucks are going to be doing when they come back. Are they coming back to feud as heels with Omega? Or are they going to come back and reunite and like be conquering baby faces? I have no idea. But I think they're gone for a while. But that was the best thing on the show by Miles. Easily, easily. And even if you didn't like the post-match stuff when it came to the deal afterwards when they left, that's fine. But it was by far the best thing on the show. And you're right. It was probably the best private party match that they've had since the last time they faced the Young Bucks. Or really, back in 2019 when they debuted and actually, you know, came on the scene against the Young Bucks. I... I it, and for Matt Jackson to have a separated shoulder, and granted, they Nick. were different, or Nick Jackson, to have a separated shoulder, again, granted, there's different severities to this, and I don't think it's too bad, 
but the fact that he's been working like that and the match was that good and you really wouldn't know both matches was wrong. the pay-per-view match as well yeah so hopefully he didn't make it any worse it's something that he's probably going to be out a couple weeks for that's one of the reasons i'm sure they're kind of stepping away right now but you're right. It's going to be interesting to see how all of these worlds collide together and then move the entire project product forward because we are going to need to have some sort of tie-in here at some point because once Orange Cassidy is out of the way, sure, we have Moxley and Darby Allen, but what about the rest of that group and how it fits into everything else? At some point, you figure they're going to have to come across the Hurt Business, and that's going to be interesting. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.